Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to week three of the Chisholm Invitational. I am one of the casters for this tournament. My name is Chuai, and with me, I wish, could be Max, but he is the other caster as well. Presently isn't here. I'm by my lonesome. You have to just deal with that, unfortunately. But we are back here with week three of the Chisholm Invitational. I am so thankful to be back. And as well, a big thanks to the main sponsor of this tournament, Lenovo. Lenovo have helped out not only the, uh, the Chisholm High School here by supplying them with a bunch of excellent gaming gear, but I have a little surprise for you all sitting at home. We have a couple of goodies here, a headset, some headphones, but, and also a mouse. So this is amazing. So I'm not only showing these off to brag, but the winner of the Chisholm Invitation will receive five pairs of all of these goodies. And they're the same ones that we use here at Chisholm and they are fantastic. They're very good, great mechanical keyboard, the headset, surround sound, and the mouse. Can't go wrong with a good mouse. So again, a reminder, a big thank you to Lenovo for supplying us with these for the winner of the tournament. So that for those watching at home, I mean, you can get stuff for playing video games. That's pretty awesome. But speaking of video games, we have a game to watch right now. The game we are going to watch is SPCC Colors. Understandably, or arguably, the top seed of this entire tournament versus St. Francis 2. A battle between David and Goliath, St. Francis 2 being a particular, particular younger team Meanwhile, SPCC Colors are a dominant force, so we'll see how this game can go out. Hopefully, we can see a couple of changes here in the ladder ranking. I would love to see St. Francis come out with a win here. Who doesn't like the underdog story? But let's jump over to the pools here. So looking at pool two, we've got Chisholm Maroons, St. Eugene Spirits, uh, St. Columbus Blue, and UIF Aquinas. Chisholm Maroons on six points, Eugene Spirits on four, St. Columbus Blue on four, and Aquinas UIF also, not also, they're on two. Pool three, we've got STMC Black on six, Trinity Red on four, St. Francis College one on four, and Chisholm Green on two. In pool four, we have Aquinas AQ on six points, SP, SPCC Free Jungle on four points, STMC Gold on four, and Macaulay College, I am so sorry, on two points there. And the pool we are looking at today is pool number one. We've got St. Columban's Black on four, St. Columban's Gold on four, SPCC Colors on three, St. Francis College two on three, and Trinity Blue on two. And that is the match we will be watching today. But I mean, let's just have a little bit of a closer look at the individual teams now. Jumping over to Goliath themselves, we've got SPCC Colors. So we're, we're looking at Master Knight, Shaco Not Found, Hey I'm Purple, Banter Boy, and Phoenix Cred. Those are the main squad. However, we do have a little bit of a rotation here for this game. We've got Frostlaw, Banter Boy, and Water Hazard 10 filling in for the team there. We'll see if that only helps SPCC come out with a win, or whether, you know, the new players might not be as uh, as used to playing with this team. So we'll see what happens there. And then on St. Francis to David is a bit of a younger team. We've got Hypologic, a Botman123, Fredo Frog, Pandaman01, and Huskies Plays Games as the main squad. And then in this game, I believe we're swapping our Botman with Friendly Asian Kid there. So, I mean, looking at both of these sides here, obviously my main attention goes on to the heavier side of SPCC. You look at Frostlaw, who is, uh, who is sitting at probably a higher rank there. Hey, I'm Purple, a returning champion. Shaco not found as a support, a great support. However, they are missing, I believe, their Master Knight, who was one of the top MVPs of last year and going into this year, who has a considerably, a very good uh, kill to death ratio. And then looking over to St. Francis too, I mean, Frodo Frog definitely has the most kills there as the jungler, sitting at around about eight. His death ratio is a little bit high, but he also has high assistance. So basically what that means is that he's actually doing a lot with 
He's doing a lot with his uh, with his team. He's going to be able to get in there. And also, looking at Husky plays games as a support there, three kills, five assists, nine, uh, five deaths, nine assists. Very good support ratio there. I mean, we will just wait for the game to start now. But if anything, I am just going to be looking at, hey, I mean, realistically, looking at this team, we know that SBCC is going to be wanting to do very well. We're just going to assume that. Uh, so... What I want to see out of SPCC is the fact that they can complete a really surgical game. And what, what I mean by that is the fact that they can do everything very clinically. They can get the objectives. They're all very clean. They don't really waste time. Meanwhile, I'm looking at, say, Francis too, and what I want to see from them is good mechanical understanding of the game, whether they, they, they know the warding spots, how they react to what SPCC is doing. If F SPCC start getting ahead, how does St. Francis 2 come back into this game? And we've already jumped in to the champion selection here. So let's have a little, book, little bit of a look at the picks and bans. We're looking at, on the side of SPCC, they ban have banned out the Nunu. They have banned out the Kane. On the side of St. Francis too, we've banned out the Yi and the Shaco. Oh, excuse me there. Uh, <laughs> I mean, when you have a champion in your name, Shaco not found, it's pretty hard to not ban it. it tends to be, I know he did play a lot of Shaco support when it was in the meta there, and it definitely was something that was very strong. Lately, it has fallen out, just due to the fact that it's not as strong as it used to be, but I mean, jumping over to the side of SPCC, they have banned out Viga. Arguably, you could be looking at this and saying that they have banned out two junglers, but more often than not, you see the Nunu being run in mid lane now. So they have more or less banned, I'd say, two mid laners and two junglers, really targeting two roles there. I mean, even Viga can be played in an AD carry. Uh, I have seen a lot of mages switch over to that, uh, that bot lane carry. You can't really call it AD carry anymore. Uh, and then the last ban being a Kha'Zix on the side of St. Francis 2. Definitely targeting the jungler there. Two heavy bans against two hyper carries. Fiora being grabbed most likely in the top lane. But you never know that the caster curse could happen. And he could be played as a support. We will wait and find out there. Seeing what uh, St. Francis will react with. They already know that there's a top laner there. So it's pretty safe to pick the Aatrox. A very strong dominating top laner. And definitely can go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Fiora. However, it just depends on, I would say, who is able to get that first blood. Who can find those first initial uh, advantages going ahead. Fiora is someone who can duel very easily. Considering her tag name is the Duelist, she can 1v1. Once she hits 6, gets a lot of healing, gets a lot of percentage of health, um, uh, percentage of health damage as well. So she is quite dangerous if, if left unchecked. But I say the same for Aatrox. Aatrox works a lot more in an AoE capacity, able to decimate teams. You would expect no less from the God of War himself. And Warwick being grabbed in the jungle, a very good and safe jungle choice. A lot of sustain that comes out of Warwick quite early there. Self-mitigation, a good ultimate com uh, a good ultimate uh, engage there, being able to suppress someone as well, can take objectives fairly easily by himself. Jin and a Zed being grabbed on the side of SPCC. And when anyone locks in Zed, my immediate thoughts are, okay, I mean, if you want to lock in that champion, you gotta you got to have some skills on them. You don't want to be... Uh, you got to try and show off. I'd say Zed is one of the champions where very flashy plays can happen. And, I mean, I'm hoping that we see some of those today. And I would be uh, almost afraid there if I was SP... Uh, sorry, uh, St. Francis 2. A Zed lock-in could be pretty dangerous. Uh, the Jin being locked as in an AD carry for SPCC. So we'll just see that probably rotate out. Uh, just swapped there. Just wanting to lock that in there. Probably feeling very comfortable. A little bit interesting there. They decided to go with an AD carry over a jungler since they already know who the enemy jungler is. So it was pretty safe. It was a, it was a relatively safe pick, but they might want to see what is going on. Uh, just because now you could have the potential of it being banned out. Uh, more junglers being banned out, but they have decided St. Francis 2 to ban two supports, getting a, a blitz and uh, the thresh out. So ain't nobody going to get pulled in today. 
And then on the other side for SPCC, they have banned out 280 carries, Ash and Caitlyn. Ash, someone who a whole meta and a whole team comp has been based around now. You look at the LEC, you look at the LPL, where Ash is used very heavily in uh, controlling objectives early game due to the extra vision that she gets and a brilliant ultimate on an AD carry. The Akali being locked in for the mid lane as well for St. Francis. Didn't comment on that one. Assassin v Assassin. We'll see who can come out ahead. It's a very heavy lore match in the mid lane there. Vayne being grabbed as an AD carry. A little bit of an interesting choice there. Vayne is considerably shorter range than what Jin will be. However, the, the, the potential... I mean, Vayne is also another champion where I'd look at it look at it and it's very a, uh, a flashy played champion if played incredibly correctly using the ult using starter stepping she can just peel herself she doesn't need that help from the team Elise and Leona being locked in Elise most likely jumping up into that jungle role and Leona being locked in as a support Leona's just a very strong support a lot of CC basically being able to help Jin out as much as she can level two level three preferably level three that's when you get all your abilities as Leona. We'll see what happens there. And then on the other side, St. Francis has locked in a Lux. So looking at a little bit of a, an AP heavy team on the side of St. Francis. They do have two hyperscaling ADs. Aatrox is more a bruiser, but Vayne is definitely one of those hard AD carries. And Lux, now the, I'm, the only thing that I'm a little bit concerned about there is that the Lux cannot really peel for the vein as much and yes vein can peel for herself but post six uh that's that's vein can only peel for herself once she gets that ultimate until then they're gonna have to be really really afraid of that leona engage luck sure she can she can snare the leona as, she, as soon as she goes in but that's already too late Leona would have already got the snare off. She already got the stun off. And by that point, Jin's counting to four and Vayne is gone from this game. So looking at both sides there, uh, man, they're both, they can both swing so heavily. Uh, the only one that is really reliable in terms of rely uh, ooh, this is a this is a gonna be an interesting match. The top lane, Fiora. If Fiora gets behind, it's very hard for Fiora to come back into the game because she's so individual focused. She's, she's very much about finding her target and taking it down. However, Aatrox can work with the team, provide large amounts of AoE, just be a dominating presence with his ult, with his abilities, with his AoE abilities. So eventually, I mean, if Fiora un understandably gets behind, Aatrox can, or even if Aatrox gets behind, at least he can somewhat help in team fights. Now that won't matter if Fiora gets ahead. Warwick as well, is someone who can still be there uh, towards the mid to late game. Elise kind of power spikes towards that mid game and then falls off a little bit if she isn't really, really far ahead. So on the other side, you uh, Elise has a really good jungle clear, but her objective control, not so much. However, I know how mechanically focused SPCC are, and Elise can have a lot of presence early game with the fact that she can tower dive especially with someone like a Vayne and a Lux, and they do have a tanky support. So there is a potential there for some early tower dive since Elise can stop aggro from the towers using her repel. We'll see how that works out. And it, I mean, going into the mid lane, I'm looking for flashy plays. I'm looking for, you know, if you, oh man, the Zed, I'm, I'm thinking about what the Zed should do. And you go in with the ult. Akali might be able to negate a little bit of that damage, though, with the Shroud if she can pop down and rotate accordingly. So we'll see how that works out, because Zed will need to be able to see her to hit those abilities, I'd hope, otherwise that man is a god. And But yeah, again, Assassin v Assassin mid lane. That's how... Ten, that tends to be how mid laners go nowadays. Uh, so... Again, could go either side depending on how skillful this Akali is. If not, if this Zed gets ahead, I would be afraid if I was anyone on the other team. It doesn't matter how tanky you are. If the Zed has enough damage, you'll just get burst like a balloon. And then going to the bot side again, Jin, Leona, a very solid lane there. A lot of CC that coming out of them. Jin even has his snare. However, looking at the side, you do have a stun that comes out of Vayne with her Condemn. But, and you also have the Lux, uh, you have the Lux stun as well, the snare. Uh, but it's a more damage focused uh, lane coming out of St. Francis compared to a more traditional lane coming out of SPCC. So, I mean, I'm a Leona player myself, so I'm gonna have to go with the Leona just out of pure habit. But I mean, 
I want to see what St. Francis can do, but I also know how good SPCC are. So I want St. Francis to show what they can do. And I believe we will jump quickly now over to an ad while we wait for the game to load. Again, thank you, Lenovo, for sponsoring this. This has been the Chisholm Invitational, and I will see you in the game very shortly. Just for a little bit. That wasn't that was that wasn't too long. Welcome back. Uh, again, thank you to Lenovo for sponsoring this tournament. Let's. Uh, I'm just going to discuss a few things that I see right now in the champion selection. Uh, interesting to notice that the Lux has not grabbed Ignite. She's opted to go for Barrier. Now, it's probably a smart decision there. Because Barry is going to negate a lot of the damage that's going to be coming out of, say, if you get stunned by Leona. If you get stunned by Jin. Not by Jin. You can't get stunned by Jin. You get snared by Jin. But the damage that comes out of that, Barry is going to help. And she's also picked up Dark Harvest. So definitely looking at trying to get them as low as possible. Probably the best pick there for Lux. It is interesting, however. If I was in that situation, and I tend to know that, I mean, realistically, that lane... Unless you are getting really, really far ahead, like I maybe would have opted for an aftershock because it does proc off Lux's snare. And especially when you go in, uh, if you have a Leona that goes into you and you are able to get that point blank snare off, you do activate aftershock, which does give you some extra armor and MR. I know this mainly because it was a Lux main and uh, whenever she would go against an enemy Katarina, she would always take aftershock because it would negate so much of her damage. Now, Dark Harvest is still good, however, you just kind of have lost a lot of tankiness there in that bottom lane. Uh, both top laners have opted to go for Conqueror and Teleport, so pretty traditional, nothing's changed there. The Zed in the mid lane has gone for Ignite, and Akali's gone for Ignite. The only difference is that Zed has gone for Electrocute, and Akali has gone for Conqueror. So Akali definitely looking at having prolonged engages to get that healing off, where Zed's just looking at getting that 1-2-3 combo and then popping off. Besides from that, Fleet Footer grabbed on Jin, so he's just going to be running around at the speed of sound. And I believe Press the Attack grabbed for Vayne, which... Does make sense. You could kind of go for lethal tempo or press the attack, depending. Since Vayne already has a three stack combo, I mean, it doesn't, you can really chop change that. Press the attack would only attribute the extra attack speed there. Again, looking at this, it hasn't changed my mind too much on who will come out ahead. I really want to see a clean game come out of SPCC. I know that they are capable of it. I know. I know that what they can do is play a game of league very well and that the, the way that SPCC work and the thing that I've noticed is that they can find a flaw in how the enemy team plays and then slowly take advantage of that as the game goes on. They're very good at adapting to that and it just comes down to the leadership of SPCC being able to understand that. And I would really, again, love to see how St. Francis 2 plays. What, how their playstyle will adapt to as the, uh, how their playstyle adapts as the game goes on. Alrighty. So there we go. We've now jumped in to game. Looking at it, I mean, pretty traditional starts here. Spell Thief's grabbed for the Lux. We'll see if she grabs any healing potions or not. And we're waiting a full work to get into game. And Lux has opted to go for no healing potions there. And Vayne went back and grabbed her item as well. So that's good. Ah. Bit of a risky move there. I don't know if I do not know if Lux has forgotten that she could buy health potions, but she doesn't have one at the moment, which might hurt her in the long run. And there is Aatrox finding a Fiora there. Fiora dashing around, getting those vital spots. She's doing a little bit of damage, but however, Aatrox pushing around to the side there. Oh, Warwick, buddy, that is not the right position you want to be in. But Akali is there to help out a friend in need. A little bit of a movement, uh, a little bit of a uh 
a movement path there by Atrox, which, Atrox, which was really smart, was the vital, he put the vital spot, which is that little ring around him. Whenever Fiora auto attacks or hits a Q on that vital spot, she gets healed, a little bit of bur uh, burst of movement speed, and also she does some extra damage. What Aatrox did was he made sure that vital spot was, whether intentional or not, he made sure that that vital spot was against a wall, so Fiora has no way to actually pop that. Would have saved him, I mean, another, he would have gone down to half health. If I was him, I would probably go back and heal up. You don't really need to stay around, but he's opted to go against that. And then the rejuvenation bead grab for Warwick as well, since he does have his inbuilt sustain. Doesn't really need to rely on health potions too much there. Wards being dropped there. Pretty defensive on the side of SPCC. Just trying to see if there's any invades. And speaking of invades, there is a two-shot combo coming out of the gin there. One bullet and one grenade being thrown out. <laughs> Just chunking that Lux down a little bit. If she had a potion, she'd be able to heal, but unfortunately she does not. A little bit more trading going on there. Aatrox is pretty much almost down to half health because he didn't go back. And my friend, you are in a dangerous spot now having to burn the flash because he is not respecting the amount of damage that can come out of Fiora early game. You have to be very, very careful of those vitals. If you pretty much now have to heal. You have to do as much as you can just try to come back into the game here. Fiora's already hit level 2. She's going into the, with the engage. Now, Aatrox gets a nice knock up there. The vital was on the other side there, so Fiora wasn't able to grab it. So, I mean, that pretty much saved his life. It might be a very, very early back here in the top lane. A bit of trading going down in the mid lane as well. The CS discrepancy there in the mid lane so far. Kali already 7 CS up. Um, pushing that in to the tower. So we'll see if uh, purple can come back. Opted to go for the longsword start as opposed to a door and shield or anything like that. Aatrox getting very low. The flash coming out of Fiora and grabbing up first blood there. Beautiful mechanical play. We knew that was going to happen out of Frost Law. I mean, just bullying them early game. That's what Fiora does. And now it's looking like it's gonna, it might be a little bit difficult to come back into. The Warwick finding the Fiora. The fear going off the teleport coming from Aatrox a little bit further back than what he probably would like. Warwick's going to try to do as much as he can to catch up. Fiora's trying as much to survive there. The Q coming out of Warwick, being able to stop her. Fredo Frog finding an opportunity and taking advantage of it. Bending Frostlord to his knee. A brilliant play. A snare coming out of Lux there. Forcing Jin to go into tower range. He's going so low. A little bit of a mistake there. Coming out of Banter Boy. Thought he would push a little bit too far ahead. The Lux finding a brilliant stare, a snare. Forcing him to burn his heal as well. So that is one summoner skill down. And we are seeing action happen all over the map here. The Akali might get ganked here in the mid lane. She is trying to bully the Zed as much as possible. Doing a good job, but there comes the Elise. Elise is going to be wandering up to try and find anything. The Fiora coming down from top lane as well. It is a sandwich. However, Warwick is here to help. We'll see how much he can do. They're, they are stuck, unfortunately. The Warwick has now been shown. The Elise Cocoon coming out. Warwick has been popped due to the Electrocute. The Repel's coming down, and there will be most likely two kills. Friendly Asian kid jumping over the wall, flashing, throwing down the Shroud, trying to do as much as he can to survive. The backflip saving him. The Cocoon, however, as, me as much flashy plays as you can. The Elise Spider will find the kill there, and oh my lanta, there was a lot of abilities used, of flashes burnt on multiple teams, however, SPC has walked away with two extra kills, both on the Elise, I mean, almost got away there, however, running up towards the enemy's base, I don't know what, what, where you could have possibly gone, but... Good job on escaping that much there. Leona finding a very, very nice Zenith play there. Popping it out, but a nice retaliation there from the Lux. Stopping any progressive damage or any further damage there. As Jin was slowly counting the four, it could have been a little bit dangerous there. Really explosive start to this game so far. SPCC has walked away with a little bit of a 1.2 uh, gold lead there. Fiora looking a little bit low in the top lane. Aatrox might be able to bully her out of it, but Fiora still does have teleport, so she can come back into the game at any point here. Warwick having the only kill on the side of St. Francis, so really looking at how he can interact with the lanes. Speaking about Warwick interacting with the lanes, he is currently bot lane. Snare comes out, hits Leona. However, Leona with Aftershock and her W up, just going to be able to negate a lot of that damage, and Warwick has made himself known, so at least SPCC know where they are. Aatrox is going to find the Fiora. However, I don't know if he's going to be able to find a kill here. Warwick now going on to Leona in the bot lane, flashing over to get the fear that places her backwards. Leona 
getting snared by the Lux and the Warwick being such a playmaker in the side of St. Francis here, definitely just controlling the map in terms of jungle skills and not to mention the Akali escaped the gank in the mid lane coming from the Elise. However, Warwick, my friend, you might find yourself in a little bit of trouble here. Elise is full health. However, look, uh, Warwick might be able to heal up enough. The fear coming out, but we're going to drop straight back over to the top lane. This is just an absolute clown fiesta. There is abilities happening left, right, and center. The Fiora manages to pop the entire ult there. All four stacks. One, two, three, four. Gets a huge healing radius, and then that drops the Aatrox. Ult the ult. Fiora will win every single time, and Warwick manages to push the uh, push the Elise out of there. They do manage to grab Scuttle as well. What a huge match to start off with. The Aatrox, unfortunately, just not finding those 1v1s there and has actually said, hey, maybe my job now isn't to just fight the Fiora. However, Zed has found the Warwick. There's the Electric pop plus the ult. You probably don't need it. The ult might pop here. Yes, there is a kill for Zed able to find the Warwick. Unfortunately, uh, St. Francis 1 weren't able to react in time. The Elise jumping over using the explosive plant. The Akali trying to do as much as he can to save the blue buff. And there is a decent amount of damage coming out of there, forcing them away, saying, hey, this is our blue buff. This is my jungle. You need to leave right now, friend. Akali jumping over, potentially finding the enemy bot lane here. Jin is run. He's he is out of mana. Doesn't really matter. Jin doesn't have too many escapes there. Poss possibly burning a flash or a heal, but wasn't able to find that. Going back to the top lane here, Fiora is not going to give me a chance to breathe. The parry coming out, negating the knock up here. The flash coming out from Aatrox, but I don't know if it's enough. Uh, uh, Fiora is looking for those vitals there. One, two, and finds a third kill on to the Aatrox. The Executioner's Blade grabbed to negate the healing, but it's not going to negate the healing when she can just destroy you in four auto attacks. They, St. Francis, are going to react to potentially taking a dragon here and a, an infernal. An Infernal Drake grabbed for St. Francis. Warwick making sure the the entire team can get out. However, Leon is going to go in with that E there. Akali's going to try and react, but Akali isn't six yet. She's going to be able to too much. They're going to try and find the Leona, but the Leona, a beautiful stun at the end of the Akali uh, dash there to stop any potential damage, and that is a dragon for two kills. It is currently eight two on the side of SPCC, but however, they did miss out on that dragon, so a really, really good job by St. Francis there, being able to see that they could take an, an objective and they punish St. Fr um, SPCC for not, uh, for not uh, at least being ready for it. So really good job there. Maybe I will get a chance to breathe here and talk about something that is not a fight. Uh, Ex Executioner Blade also being grabbed for Fiora to stop any of the potential healing that's coming out of Aatrox there. Both junglers have elected to go with the chilling smite, so not the challenging smite, so definitely looking at more, you know, catching up abilities. Uh, I mean, the Zed, the, the Zed's just having really good roaming potentials at the moment. He's just g being able to find these spots really well. The Warwick is found, has found the Elise, however, it is a, a level five versus level five. He has been cocooned, he has been stunned, the electric crew has popped, and Fiora is right there. Unfortunately, you have been caught out. The Zed ulting onto the Akali there. Level 8 versus level 6. There is a two-level discrepancy. Zed able to find that kill, and they might be able to find another one here. Aatrox is trying to fly away with those gigantic wings. I don't know if he's going to be able to do it. There is a vital spot in range, and Fiora does find it, getting her fourth kill of the game. And that, that level gap and that... The bullying in the top lane is just going to go larger and larger ahead. To deal with Fiora, you need to send someone to deal with Fiora. And at the moment, the really only person who could do with that is Warwick. But that is the strongest player on the side of St. Francis. So by doing that, you've basically given up a, a strong presence in in those team fights. But then again, Fiora is 4-1, and one, so she might be able to just kill Warwick. Lux has been caught out of position, having to burn the barrier there, having to burn the snare. Looking for any any potential reaction damage, but not going to be able to find it. Leona is level 6, so potentially could have used the ult there. Maybe would have secured a kill. They opted to not go with that, but save it for a rainy day. But Duskar's Blade being grabbed for Zed, so the damage that's going to be coming out of that champion is only going to grow, and it's only going to grow further. You've got to be really careful. If if I was looking at, if, if I'm Lux, if I'm Zvain, if I'm Akali, with that Zed's damage going up, more and more. I mean, you 
in a team fight. We might see it right now, actually, as they go to take Herald. Warwick flashes over the wall. Warwick manages to steal the Herald, the smite, not on cooldown for the Elise. They find a beautiful objective there. However, a team fight has broken out. The Suppress coming out of the Warwick. Akali's being able to find the Elise. The Fiora is looking low. Akali is on the hunt for blood. Akali picks up her second kill. Zed is out of position here. A triple kill for the Akali. And just like that, the tables have turned on the side of St. Francis. Woo! I was talking about that Zed damage being a little bit, but now that Akali has shown that she is a challenger in this game and an no wards over that wall. St. Francis, uh, sorry, St. SBCC may have thought they would have been safe, but a flash by the Warwick. Spreado Frog not letting them get away with that. A Rift Herald right placed in mid lane now. Going to also grant them a couple of tower plates, which will add to the kills there. And, I mean, you got to go back. you got to spend that gold now. you got to re-buy. What an excellent swing there by St. Francis. That is the second objective, major objective of the game that they have stolen away from SBCC. And this game was looking like it was going to swing in one heavy direction. But right now, I mean, it could go either way. Friendly Kid has definitely grabbed a little bit of advantage. you got to go back and you got to spend it, though. Don't, don't, don't overextend, you know? You take those little wins, you go back, you regroup, and then you push forward more. The worst thing that can happen now is that uh, St. Francis maybe ex overextends a little bit, they get caught out, and they lose the lead that they just had, uh, just taken, just had taken away from S SBCC. Speaking about the next objective here, the dragon is up in 30 seconds. Another reason to go back. So you can go back, buy your new items, uh, get your control wards, so you are able to grab as much vision as possible. Elise clearing out the jungle on the side of St. Francis there. Warwick wandering around the Akali, taking a little bit more damage there from the Zed in the mid lane. Warwick just skulking around. Just having a look, just trying to sm just trying to smell who's the weakest, and then run extremely fast towards them. Interesting to look that. I mean, a lot of this is happening, but the the damage coming out of Fiora. She does have a Blade of the Ruin King now, so she's going to do a lot of uh, uh, max health damage alongside every bit of max health damage she already does. The Warwick going in. I can't even talk about how Aatrox just got popped. The Lux being able to kill on the Elise. The Leonel goes out, finds two, but doesn't find the Warwick, the most important one. The Akali bl blams the ult straight through. Zed able to find the Warwick there. They're going to try and do as much as they can to pick up another kill. The Vayne goes forward, grabs the Leona. The Jin, however, is counting the four. Maybe able to find up another kill there in the mid lane. Lux throws down the snare, stopping the Zed right in his tracks. And that is a two for one. But the dragon is up. There was a death in the top lane there. And an 06, uh, 06 Aatrox versus a 5-2 Fiora. It does not look like a fun time. Maybe first towel will be taken on the side of SPCC. Jin has started the dragon, so we'll see whether uh, St. Francis can't, can come back in time. I don't think Jin is low enough. It's not going to matter. Uh, SPCC manages to take the Cloud Drake, and it will be an ocean map, which will give everyone increased healing. So those Executioner Blades that are coming out of uh, Fiora and Aatrox will definitely be more beneficial as the game goes on, especially with Akali buying the Gunner Blade. She's going to be healing a lot. So as long as Fiora can get a little bit of AD damage onto that Akali, she will negate a majority of that healing. Looking at any potential item buys here. Lost Chapter being up bought for the Lux, so definitely playing more of a mid lane in the support position than an actual support. And then on the Leona, maybe looking at going for a Shirelias, maybe looking at going for, I mean, an Iceborne Gauntlet would be another one I would look at. But a BF Sword grab for the Jin hasn't really completed one full item yet. But the Fiora out for blood. The Aatrox having to burst the ult, but it's not going to be enough. The extra health isn't going to be enough. The Fiora's just the style points coming out of that one. Finish him off with just the repose. Akali is currently only one level down. The Gunblade being popped off. The Zed ult going in. She dashes back into the Shroud there, trying to uh, at least protect her from any of that damage. The Warwick ult coming up with the Flash being burned from Zed, but I don't know if it's going to be enough. The Fear also coming down. Warwick playing very aggressive there, knowing that the ult was down. Burning the Flash there, making sure that Zed knows his place. And oh my lord, this, this Warwick is putting in some work here. Just being around the map at all times. He has kind of given up on top lane, which is understandable if I was in the Warwick's position as well. There's probably not much you can do. 
Um, if I was the Aatrox, I would look at building more tanky items now. You've kind of just... You can't really build too much damage. The Warwick has found the level 12 Fiora. They're currently three levels over that. We'll see where the Warwick can actually survive this repose coming out. The Fear, however, might not be a little bit. It's just not enough there. The Fiora has too much healing, and she's going to be able to find two kills just on the cusp of death there. The Akali is going to be able to try and stop it, though. The Flash coming out of Fiora, the Gunblade, the EQ coming out of Akali, stopping the Conqueror's Pops has... Uh, the Conqueror has popped, and she's going to be able to find another kill there two more kills for the Akali and if I was SPCC I would be looking at worried right now it did take three people to kill that Fiora however and I mean that took two of the strongest members coming out of St. Francis to kill that Fiora so if she is left in that top lane just to, excuse me just to 1v1 the Aatrox Aatrox will pretty much lose every single time so they need to send three people to deal with her now, the thing with that is that when you send three people to deal with the Fiora, you're potentially just leaving a discrepancy somewhere else in the map. It may be uh, just the bot lane versus four people in the mid lane, so you have to be really careful. You either have to kill that Fiora very, very quickly, or you just let her push and hope that Aatrox can just keep her away from the turrets at all times. The Herald is up, and it will be up for the next about... Uh, two minutes and a little bit there. The Snare coming out from Lux. Lux will pop the ult, and that's a dangerous amount of damage. The Dark Harvest Ducks will come down. Leona, I don't think that's the position you want to be in. The Zenith Blade coming down. The ult also popping a heal going down, but a nice root coming out of uh, Lux there. Being able to find the Leona after she tries to get away as fast as possible. And there is another attempt at the rear Herald there coming out of SPCC. They are now a little bit more cautious. The Zed sitting in the brush. Akali popping up. The Zed ult coming down and it's not going to be enough. Akali's not going to be able to save herself with the Shroud. Fiora is able to get the full, stocks, uh, full stacks of the ult down. Finding a double kill. Zed finding the last kill. And that's very, very dangerous. As I was saying in the very beginning of this game, if Fiora gets ahead, she can single touch, she can just focus on one person extremely heavily and take them down. One by one by one is how Fiora will take you down. And she just did it. She threw the ult down on the Akali. Akali got bursted by three members of the enemy team. Uh, so by SPCC, knowing how dangerous Akali is now. Five kills. Uh, uh, sitting on those five, those five kills with the Gunblade. She has grabbed a uh, stopwatch there, so it's going to be able to help her at least once before she gets the Zonias. And the Herald has been popped top lane, so that will potentially be almost two turrets there if she wants to play ahead. However, Akali and Warwick are going to be able to... Uh, maybe they have stopped the Herald there. Maybe stop the Fiora from recalling. We'll see what happens. But, I mean... This this game has just been very, very intense. Rapid Fire Cannon grabbed for the Jin as opposed to potentially going for the IE first. Nice Snare coming out of the Lux, just showing that they are aware of the, the movements of the enemy team. And a Phantom Dancer grabbed for the Vayne. Interesting choices on both of the AD carry sides. Usually you want to prefer to go for your, uh, your AD damage item first as opposed to the attack speed item. Especially an IE on Jin is just absolutely destructive or even a Storm Razor if you want that extra slow. But I don't think Warwick is going to be able to get out of this one. There is too much CC for that man. It doesn't matter how many kills you got. When you can't move for five seconds, it does not matter. Hey, I'm Purple finding another kill there on the uh, Aatrox and the Akali being grabbed by the Fiora. And let's just have a look at how fast Fiora can heal back up. She's almost back at full health. That is absolutely insane. Lux, that is not the correct position to be in. The Dragon is up. The Jin grabbing his second kill of the game. And again, objective is up. SPCC know that. They gave away two objectives. They're not giving away anymore. They've currently taken the, the, uh, the last three, the Herald and the last two Dragons as well. Most likely, look for this bot lane turret. And Vayne, you are in trouble. Yeah, there's not much I can say about this. The Elise Stun coming down. The Root coming out of the Leona. How will work is going to be able to try to take down the Fiora in the top lane. Fiora is four levels ahead. And that was a huge Q coming out of Fiora. Just showing how fair this woman is. Again, a huge vital hit there. And she is doing a lot of damage. That was too... I mean, Aatrox is 0 and 11. And... Uh, this stage, I don't know if there's much he can do. Akali throwing down the Shroud, so she's going to offer herself a little bit of protection there. But there's just way too much damage coming out of the Fiora. Akali probably shouldn't have come back in there. Fiora is going to be able to grab the tower. And just within the last 
seven minutes this game has swung unbelievably out of control on the side of SPCC. There was St. Francis held a, a, a seed of hope that potentially they could take down the Giants here. Fiora, it might die here. <laughs> However, she is just going to be able to heal up. The tower is going to find the final shot there, giving Warwick a huge shutdown bonus on the side of uh, uh, St. Francis. However, Aatrox is going to be taken down for the 12th time on the side of Zed. Zed is currently 12 and 2. Fiora is 14 and 4. Jin has not died at all this game, playing very, very safe. We'll see, if, uh, we'll see if Zed can pick up another kill here, but there is a very, very <laughs> unfortunate Lux position. However, Zed used his clone to dash, so he doesn't have an escape for the moment, but he is going to be able to flash and run away from that one. But as I was saying before, there was maybe a chance that St. Francis would have been able to come back into this game, but... SPCC with the mechanical knowledge knowing what they needed to do and Warwick my friend it is not safe in your own jungle anymore a flash but I don't know if it will be enough a heal coming out of vein and it will be enough just to just to help our friendly doggo boy get out of there Warwick also finding a beautiful ult onto the Elise there managing to catch her Zed just trying to flash and get out of the way not flashing but dashing Akali being able to find the Zed, but however, Fiora has found the rest of St. Francis here. Whether she'll dash over the wall, this woman is not stopping. The ult coming out of the Lux, but barely doing anything. There's a vital. Will we see a quadra kill coming out of the Fiora? And there is a quadra kill. Akali is the last one left alive. And whether the uh, this Leona will just hold the Akali down just long enough that this, uh, that this Fiora can get a panda kill, we will see. They, I mean, there's nothing better than getting a panda kill in a game of League of Legends. And currently, Akali, you need to run because you hate to be that one that gives over the fifth kill. She will be recalling. I think that she is safe enough. So that is a penta denied on the side of Frostlaw. But it does not matter. 18 and 4. Ravenous Hydra, Trinity Force, Blade of the Ruin King. I don't know if many people can stop this just absolute force of destruction in the top lane. So... <laughs> Apparently, they can. All it takes is four members of St. Francis and a couple tower hits, and you can take down an immortal being. And a last whisper, actually not being up bought there, opting to go for a more defensive item, especially after that last kill there. Whether it will be a frozen mallet may just be a Sterix gauge. Um... We'll see gets bought there. A Thornmail being grabbed on the side of Warwick. Murillo Nomicon it being grabbed for Akali. Just to try to stop any of that damage, any of that healing coming out of Fiora. It is a lot. Now, if I was St. Francis, I would be looking at... Alright, Fiora's down for the next 10 seconds. Dragon is up in 50. What do we need to do? We need to find these picks. You need to take down these highly valuable targets as soon as you can. The Fiora, the Zed, those are the two targets. If they get out of line, if they misstep you need to just dive on them as soon as possible to try to create any type of advantage for your team. The Infinity Edge finished on the Jin, so he's definitely going to add to the damage of this team, but the Warwick not going to be able to ult far enough away. The Elise finds the Cocoon. They find a dead Warwick. Baron is up. There's no jungler on the side of St. Francis, and St. Francis is hoping for a miracle to stop this Baron play right now. The Fiora can just pretty much assault out the entire team. Leona finding a nice stun on to the Lux. But I don't know if anything else is going to be able to be found there. But Zed manages to find a double kill. The Lux and the Vayne both being caught out there. Carly having to ult to dash away. Fiora getting low as well. But the Jin coming in being like, hey, I'm in this game too. Rapid Fire Cannon increasing the attack range. My man counts to four. And Akali drops to the floor. Woo! <laughs> More Malmordius being grabbed for the Zed, so that's going to help him survive the AP damage coming out of the side of St. Francis 1. But I don't know if it is enough. The death timers are justifiably long enough that they are going to be able to take down an inhibitor or two. Zed are working on the top one. The mid one getting dropped as well. The top, top inhib going down. They're looking at Nexus turrets right now. But if I was SPCC, I would probably look at maybe even a dragon but however they are just forcing the towers down the fiora getting caught out the snare being dropped hey i'm purple finding a vein in the middle of nowhere 
I mean, even under tower, you are not safe, but SBCC know that they do not need a Baron to finish this game. They can just whittle down their opponents bit by bit, and that is exactly what they're doing. A little bit of skirmishes here and there. The Fiora can heal to full health in a mere matter of moments. And the towers are just dropping the Jin ult coming down. Just going to try and snipe down. Just remove any little bit of health. One Nexus tower goes down. The Leona finds the Warwick there. Just sitting under tower. A huge ult comes down from Leona. Manages to find the Aatrox. However, Elise picks up one kill. She picks up two kills. There's another one. The Akali popping Zonya is there. But I don't know if she's going to be able to do enough. This Our SBCC looking like they're going to be able to take this game. Fiora just looking for Akali at this point. She said, you denied me my Penta. And I will just take that away from you now. An unofficial Penta almost. Vayne dropping the ult, trying to do anything with the final hour. The final hour of this game is very fast proceeding. The Fiora just jumps in and that is a game for SPCC. A very, very decisive victory there. 46 to 16. Ooh, and I talked non-stop for 26 minutes. Oh, man, what a good game. A really, really good game. So I, we saw what SPCC did and this, if this game should be a warning to anyone else who plays against SPCC is that if you slip up once, they will take it and they will learn from their mistakes. And they did learn from their mistakes. They lost two objectives. They lost the Infernal Drake. They lost the Rift Herald. And then they didn't lose any more. Oh, I mean, the Fiora sitting on 20 and 5 in the top lane. MVP has to go to Frostlaw, single-handedly just won that top lane, just pushed for so much damage, had to force St. Francis to just to react to the entire, just to everywhere that he was. How could you not? But then on the side of St. Francis, they had some very, very beautiful plays that definitely could have swung them back into the game. There were moments that, I mean, a glimmer of hope, a, a light above happened that I was thinking that St. Francis, I mean, may have won this. If, if I was St. Francis, I would look at the part, I, I, I would look at myself and I'd be like, hey, we did a really good job this game. But obviously it's just at key moments is where I would look at like how to swing it back into, how, how, like how to swing the game back into our favor. Maybe potentially that was Warwick sitting top more often. Maybe that was Aatrox maybe sitting underneath tower and not maybe trying to push for those kills as much. But they definitely had a point. And the person who single-handedly just put the game on his back on the side of St. Francis and said, we're trying to do this. We are going to do our best was Fredo Frog. So the ace has to go to Fredo Frog for that. I mean, the Akali did great as well. And the bot lane definitely did a lot better than what I was expecting. Maybe because uh, the Jin Leona didn't play as aggressive, but they, they definitely did come out with a lot of damage. I was watching those Lux combos and they hit very hard. The only thing there was the Lux grabbed uh, Farsight as opposed to Sweeper, which may hurt the vision score at the end of the game there. But I mean, if I was St. Francis, I would not walk away from this defeated. I would walk away from this just with my head held high, knowing that we did good at specific moments. Again, this was the David versus Goliath story. And I wanted to see how St. Francis, when, when pushed to the edge, what they would be able to do. And they came out swinging. And that's what I, I mean, yeah, definitely. I've seen, I've seen some SPCC games and they put up a fight compared to some other ones that I've seen. Um... But yeah, I think that's it for us here at the Chisholm Invitational. Again, a huge thank you to Lenovo. And as a reminder, this is the stuff you can win if you win this tournament. There's another keyboard. I mean, I've been to I Again, uh, follow this. It's up there somewhere. Follow this ch Twitch channel. Uh, GG's all around. Remember to wash your hands. Stay safe. And uh, I, we'll see you next week.